Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the DC fan page which has like plot synopsis and character bio. So we're going to be looking at JLA number 23 from 1998. Here we have early computer... Coloring in, in uh, comic books, kind of merging the two. And we're going to pick up right where we left off. Here's the cover. This is written by Grant Morrison. Pencils by Howard Porter. And John Dell is the inker. So, here we go. I assembled the chain link by link, which slowed me down a little. Aquaman's going to try to communicate with the... Uh, uh, with it, I don't care how big it is. It's a marine creature. At the first sign of anything going wrong, I'll haul on this chain, Zauriel. So. A couple of seconds later, I was in Gotham. It's some kind of parasitical machine. I think it's a remote probe designed to locate and prepare suitable host environments. It colonizes our mind, then, take, then takes control of our bodies, and finally, our planet's entire ecosystem. So, Flash then continues. After I left Batman, I sprinted through the sleeping cities of the eastern seaboard, up around the Arctic Circle to Europe to check the emergency medical airlifts. That's where I saw the second one. Very cool. John, these things are floating. They're waiting to latch onto every continent on Earth. By tomorrow, it won't just be everyone in North America who's affected. The whole world's going to be asleep under the control of those things. And the Martian Manhunter says, They're still maintaining a hold pattern in Earth's orbit. They seem to be waiting for a signal flash that gives us time. So, Flash says, What about... Lantern and the others. They've been in that dream world or whatever. It is almost an hour. Can we trust this Sandman guy? I mean, the god of dreams. Come on. The Martian Manhunter then says he's more than a god. On Mars long ago, we knew him as Lord El Zoril. Once I met him here on Earth. Believe me, we have no choice but to trust him. By the way, when he met him, that was from the Sandman series with uh, written by Neil Gaiman. It comes first in your dreams, then your dream becomes its dreams. It divides, it invades, it conquers. In the end, when you wake and open your eyes, there's no more you. There's only it. Michael Haney knows. knows. That's why it has to stop him. He knows there's something stronger than it. If only he could remember what it is. So you can see all the populace kind of going after him. Wonder Woman says, there must be thousands, millions. By the way, this is not uh, Diana. This is her mother, Hippolyta. Uh, Superman then says, I could have counted them with a glance if we still had our powers, Wonder Woman. Let's hope Sandman has something up his sleeve. And Green Lantern Kyle Reiner says, you're right. Where'd he disappear to? And so this is Daniel. Toward the uh, At the end of the Sandman, Morpheus had died and Daniel took his place. High on a hill, the king of stories stands and watches. And the dream unfolds. The title of the story is Conquerors. As here you see Wonder Woman, Superman, and Green Lantern fighting all of these creatures. So Starro, who's uh, this thing, was, I believe, the first villain or the first that the JLA fought. So so uh, we're at the Hudson Bay and Aquaman's uh, swimming there. Nothing but blackness down, here, down there. It's like ink. I don't understand why. I should be able to see it by. And then um, Aquaman, says Zoriel. What was that? I'm not sure what I just saw. It looked like the whole sea bed shifted. That was, and then he goes, my God, it just blinked. So he's been down there. I'm attempting a telepathic probe to notice the colors, though. 
and then he stops. I feel, I feel it. There are oceans too big. That it was plastic, man. Oceans beyond space and time, gravity, sewers. It crawls free. It divides and invades. No, I will not. Um, it divides, it conquers, and then um, Martian Manhunter says, Aquaman, it's infiltrating your consciousness. Let me work through you. I'm experiencing psycho combat techniques. So, back to the Flash. Okay, these are files on similar creatures you and the old League encountered, John. If Batman's right, maybe this was the f that this was the first probe, and maybe we, and suddenly, boom, as we get um, Orion. So Superman says, Green Lantern's down. We have to help him. We have a child to save, Superman. According to Sandman, he holds the key to defeating this it. He's our priority, says Wonder Woman. I'll, I'll clear a path and hold them as long as I can. Michael Haney always knew there was something missing from the world. Trapped in its dreams, he tried to imagine something better, something stronger, something stronger than it. Not far away, grotesque and human shouting dies away. And for a moment, all seems lost. And then he remembers everything. And he's like, S Superman. Superman. And finally, he breaks free from it. And he flies and takes him away faster than a speeding bullet. And Superman's like, I got you, son. Great, uh, great panel there. So, at the JLA Watchtower, <clears throat> um, this thing is bigger than the Hudson Bay, and 20 more of them are on orbit around the Earth. It seems like an emergency to me. That's why we called you. We don't know exactly what these things are. Cosmic mutations spawned from the eternal slurry of the old universe. Let's f let them face the full fury of the Astro Force. And uh, Flash is like, uh, whatever, we could use your help. Stand aside. Boom. So they're using the boom tube again. Wait, Aquaman and Zariel are down there. <laughs> so, did you see the look in his eyes, John? Its mind is primitive, but monstrous in scale. Aquaman needs my help. Warn Zariel. Tell him Orion is on his way. Great panel there. My goodness, that's an awesome drawing of Orion. Zariel, can you hear me? Get Aquaman out of there now. Orion's coming fast. Get out of there. So Orion shoots. And uh, Zariel's like, great God. Batman, this is John. I'm communicating on radio channels. I need all my telepathic strength to defend Aquaman. And Batman says, if I'm right, I don't think we have time for me to be wrong. These things are designed to send out some kind of signal, like flowers attracting bees. It occurred to me that a little negative reinforcement might possibly produce an opposite repelling signal. Could you duplicate that signal as a large-scale telepathic broadcast? Can we make them believe this is too hostile an environment? I'll telepathically download your computer data. Aquaman and I are directly connected to the creature. And Orion's appears to have wounded it. I swear that with the colorings, I thought it was uh, Plastic Man pretending to be one. All right. So Aquaman's like, pain. It's in shock. Defensive system. Retaliate. It's going to suddenly, boom, hitting Orion. And Zariel's like, Aquaman. And he's going to try to pull him out. I have Orion. He's alive. What happened? Batman, do we have the signal yet? Where is Aquaman? Zoriel. And so if you, if you remember, I have covered all of the JLA runs so far. Zoriel is an actual angel. So he's like, Christ, give me strength. I will not fail. I will not. And so he's pulling Aquaman. I have you. The fish and fowl team do the impossible. Aquaman's like, Zariel, I owe you my life, but don't ever call us that again. So, John, I'm here, and I'll make a formal complaint about Orion's conduct later. 
So it knows we're here, John. It's getting ready for another attack. Love these vertical panels. I have an alien transmission sequence. I need to pass through your consciousness, Aquaman. Calm your mind. Maintain contact with the creature. And so he says, now. I swear I think that's Plastic Man. <laughs> and so the kid's like, you're real. I knew you were real. And your belief saved us, says Superman. I'm going to set you down right outside town. I want you to stay there. If you need me, just call. I'll hear. And uh, suddenly the sky breaks. So it can no longer hide. It sheds the skin of its illusion it has constructed. It slips free of the dreams it has worn. It sees everything. It knows that this place is toxic. This environment is too hostile for its purpose. This place will not be conquered. And so there he's able to pull him up. And so. So Kyle Rayner re realizes. So since this is a dream. We can make anything happen. And. Uh, Wonder Woman's like what is it. And Sam says a nightmare. Nothing more. It has encountered a hostile environment. It must withdraw all divisions of it must withdraw and so Superman says the boys say Sandman what now how do we defeat that thing and Sandman says you've done what I brought you here for go now this dream its dream is over and uh, they begin to wake up and so it tries to run it tries to hide but the dream is everywhere and you can see Sandman with some sand there so finally they wake up and uh, Flash is like, you told me to wake you up in an hour. Time's up. That was an hour. Great Hera. Flash, what happened? Did we do it? Says Superman. We're the Justice League, Superman. What do you think? So one of the things I'm going to pause right here. One of the things that did seem through Grant Morrison's run. Grant Morrison is a great writer. But sometimes he builds and builds and builds. And then the way he kind of um, ends everything, it, it's so anticlimactic sometimes. Like, oh, there we go. We beat it. Like, there's no... And I understand they, there's been, like, fighting for, like, the entire issue and stuff. But it just almost seems a little bit of a... I don't know. Anyway, then it's the next day, so uh, the dream fades. It's gone from memories, and so people are waking up. And Daniel is walking. The here's this guy with gold. That's Haney. So epilogue: the dreaming somewhere it struggles to move, to divide. It is aware. It knows, and what it knows is fear. It comprehends at last the truth all conquerors learn. There's always someone bigger than you. And so Daniel has him. The debt you owed that little universe is now repaid, Morpheus. So here's some of the, the things that uh, he carried. In the limitless mansions of the, uh, of the King of Stories, one dream ends. Epilogue 2. One month later. It's been an interesting, okay, it's been interesting, but I'm not so sure I ever want to be a superhero again. And frankly, my daughter looks much better than I do in a swimsuit. And one of them's like, mother, I'll escort you to the teleporter, Hippolyta. We can't thank you enough for all your help while Diana's been gone. And Aquaman, I, by the way, I hate this uh, version of Aquaman. Good to see you back, Diana. Why, Arthur, you've mellowed down while I've been and uh, Marsha Manhunter's like, wait, what is that approaching? Can you feel them? Those thoughts coming from, and then all of a sudden, uh, n uh, no, nowhere, station alert. Aquaman's like, who the hell are you? And suddenly, we have other versions of the Justice League there. We're Justice Legion A. We're from tomorrow. So... 
to be continued in DC 1 million. So here you go. So we have concluded JLA number 23 from 1998 by Grant Morrison, John, um, sorry, Howard Porter and John Dell. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. And I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.